I think what's like extra frustrating is they're already starting to pack it all up. So it's already going to, tomorrow's the last day it'll ever be open. The speedway just behind us is mostly torn apart. Um, and it's all being shoved into boxes. Uh, for some of you locals, you've walked into these doors a million times. You've even walked past this sign a million times. You've come up, you've purchased your ticket, and generally, you would walk in here and you would make a right turn. You would turn to the right and go get your snacks or use their washroom. But you've probably walked past this a thousand times. And you've probably even noticed the sign and seen the black doors. But I don't think you've ever been inside. It's very cool in here. Thousands and thousands of photos that you've just never even spent the time or graced your graced your eyes upon. You've got race cars, famous ones, local to us. There's even there's even motors. There's motors and transmissions. That's amazing. Tomorrow is the last day that this will ever be open for you to come see. And those of you watching this video are probably uh, <laughs> well past that date of Saturday the 24th of September. But it's all here. And it was here. And you just never noticed it. It's like, ama like it's amazing. It's amazing. You don't understand how thick the car culture here is on the island. It's such a concentrated little lump, and it's quiet. It's 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 always been quiet about its existence, whether it's this racetrack or just the car culture in general here on Vancouver Island. It's, um, it's a little overwhelming. There's uh, just these huge walls of, of just hundreds and if not thousands of people and different cars and things that are, are uh, switched to Fun and Pepsi now. Oh my god. Pot-bellied racing team. Ah, oh, it's amazing. It's just, I you can't hear the tears behind the camera. It's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. It's so overwhelming. And each one of these little things has tiny little trophies of different stuff. Like this one over here has a, has a, a modified valve cover. Somebody went to the trouble of painting up a really nice valve cover and making a clock out of it for, like, it's all, it's all, it's insane. I can't believe it. There's chunks of little race cars all tucked away in all sorts of the corners of everywhere. I've got even little old racing helmet bags and stuff and like, it's, it's crazy, it's crazy. I don't know how to handle this. I assume these are all just people who have been inducted into our Hall of Fame here. We got old hoods and stuff and their memorabilia. It's just insane. It's it's hard to take it all in. It's wild. Is that a velvet painting? That's amazing. There's even like sliding boards. So like some, oh, oh, this one does not slide. That one's fixed, but there's like layers that you can probably tuck through 
Yeah, they slide. And you're missing stuff because there's layers to the stuff. <laughs> it's back there. There's like vintage photos from the 50s and 60s just hidden back here. And each, it's it's not even like they're reproduction items. They're not, each each and every single item is unique. and has a special reason that's here. Um, and it's great. Oh, there's a, look at that, we got 240. That's so silly. It's insane, it's insane to take it. it it's just overwhelming that they, each and every item is unique and specific and special. To somebody that they brought it in and put it in here. You even got a four cylinder class. Lots of Datsuns. So many Datsuns. It's wild. A lot of these people went on to do bigger things. Yes. Yes. <sighs> It's tough. Why do we have Australia? What's going on with Australia there? I have no idea. Got South African flags and man, I don't know, man. It's tough. There's even more inside the booth that you can't even go see. These are the official, like big official trophies and stuff you can win. I'm sure there's further stories of. things it's wild man but there's like helmets from the 50s <laughs> like oh my god like legitimately the the speedway behind us is getting torn up but we have photos of the original pace car from 1954. And it's just, it's just wild to think of how quiet uh, Vancouver Island has been about its uh, racing pedigree and history. And it's just general car culture. This is the thickest car culture I've ever been to in Canada. And, and it, honestly, in most of the US, it's, it's one of the, and a lot of the other travels I've done in the world, this is still the thickest car culture. And I don't think people get it and I keep saying it. And they just don't, they just don't pay attention. Um, and I feel unheard about it. And the locals, they don't get it. They just, their grandfather, their grandparents or stuff did this and they just think it's normal and that every city has this and they just have no frame of reference or context that this is not normal, but <laughs> to have this, this is not a normal thing. Um, and so it's frustrating. It's frustrating that the the locals just didn't They just didn't. I guess what's extra frustrating about this whole thing is that if you look through some of the stuff, this is this is pre-Western Speedway, by the way. This is Shearing Speedway, which I've just learned about, which is amazing, amazing that I came here. Um, is you look through some of these photos and you'll start to see things that are familiar even now. And so it looks like, again, the younger generation sort of took for granted what they had because <laughs> Tommy service is still around and a lot of the, some of these things you'll read the side of the car and you're like wait a second though I know those guys I know their grandparents and so they did their best keeping it together but it didn't seem to trickle down through the generations there's um there's so many photographs here but what's really weird about these photographs is you'll see really crazy builds like this um, where they have these crazy custom bodywork and all this insane amount of just effort just insane amounts of effort and I don't know where these cars went it's so weird to me to look at just these thousands upon thousands tens of thousands of automobiles <laughs> that were modified to to run on this track and I don't know where they went any of them they're all gone 
What happens to all these cars? Here's like this is a this is a, a Datsun 710. Where did it go? Where did this Datsun 710 go? There's almost no Datsun 710s just to start with. So like, what happened to it? It's yeah. wild. Yeah. Mysterious. They're just pushing one of the race cars by. It's amazing. There's some, oh, I can't, it hurts. It hurts to look at all of it. But we haven't even been in the trophy room yet. There's just every inch is filled with stuff. It's causing me to cry again. It's, it's annoying. <laughs> um, some amazing things in here. We've got our huge trophy for the the Midgley 200 or the Canada 200, I should say. We've got our Daffodil Cup stuff, and I don't even know what this one is. Strawberry Cup. I love the names. Oh, it's tough. <laughs> Just crying lots of tears. This is amazing, by the way. Crazy. Uh, so a unique part of uh, Victoria car, car culture is that we have uh, the biggest deuce coupe meeting in the entire world it's biannual and it's thousands and thousands of deuce coupes from around the world gathered downtown victoria and you can see where the origins of this come from it's all deuce coupes the entire thing it's just entirely deuce coupes and i'm sure there was other racing series and stuff but for whatever reason victoria locked on to the deuce coupe there's even special rules in british columbia specifically for deuce coupes and manufacturing your own at home because they ran out of deuce coupes, so they adjusted the the law for the entire province so that more people could make deuce coupes. So uh, the, the, the deuce coupe culture is absolutely thick here. It's crazy. There, there's it, it's just absolutely littered with deuce coupe stuff. It, it's so much so there's one right behind me. And weirdly enough, the steering wheel is not in center. It's actually crooked, and the driver's kind of leaned. And the shifter's in his, his crotch. I don't know if you can see up from this angle. Um, we'll head over, take a look. The whole car is kind of cheaty and ridiculous. But you can see the steering wheel is kind of cocked and the, uh, the shifter is, yeah, exactly between, I think it's just a one speed. You just put it in drive and the car, that would be it. But the deuce coupe thing is absolutely real here. There's just infinite amounts of deuce coupe. There's so much, so much deuce coupe. Oh, we even got some counter steer going on. Uh. So it, it's kind of a shame. We've already looked at Dick Miller's stuff earlier in this video or later in this video, wherever you are in this video. Um, you can kind of see the Canadian hat here, but you also see the Fosters uh, on there and the Bob Jane. I saw the Bob Jane earlier on the front to here and I assumed uh, there was just a accidentally similar sponsor to an Australian sponsor, but it actually turns out they were running an Oz car, uh, which is an Australian version of NASCAR. And uh, so they sent the Dick Midgley team over and the car over to Australia and ran it in Melbourne. That's Melbourne. You can even see it says Melbourne on there. Um, apparently these guys also ran in Japan, which is wild. Because <laughs> Cole's, Cole's gonna tell you something like very unique. Yes. Uh, for all the drifting fans, if you look at the hood from a NASCAR Ford Thunderbird up on there, you see in the right hand corner it says Twin Ring Motegi. Uh, Gary Smith, uh, that was his hood off of his car from the NASCAR Exhibition Series race, which was the first ever NASCAR Oval Exhibition Series race in Japan. Uh, and Gary drove in that race for Wade Racing. The Wade family, and uh, yeah, it was sponsored by Molson Canadian. He was the only Canadian in the race. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Thank Very you. Very cool. No worries, Swin. We're about 60 miles northwest of Tokyo. Uh, 
not in ski country, but felt darn close to it the past couple of days. Now let's take a look at the uh, starting. <laughs> Von Horniday and the 97 Winston West champion Butch Gillian next. You have Gary Smith and Moto Hero Nakachi. 29th and 30th, Wakita and Tia. Rich Woodland rounds out the field. Easy for me to say, right, Baker? Yeah, I can see that. <laughs> All right, you've got 31 of them. Let's check the in cars as they come around. There you're riding with one of the Japanese, four Japanese champions here, Nakita's car right there. Saw him back and forth on the steering wheel, getting the tires a little warm, getting all the excess rubber off the tires, making sure. Yeah, I think so. I wish I brought my flying plumber. Hi, Steve. How are you? Mr. Cooper has arrived at 101 years old to see his to see his spot. It's amazing. And so she comes down. The fence is already down. Most of Lego wall uh, way back in the back, already gone. A gentleman revs his motorcycles out here. And they'll keep cutting and taking things down further and further. Hello.